and welcome to The Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hurt, and today we're gonna to be talking about the teacher-client conversation. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about something that we refer to as the teacher-client conversation. And that is about how we interact with our clients on a daily basis uh, in their sessions. Now, Pilates is very well known for our very particular cueing style that is deeply anatomy-based and also with every movement, we're trying to find small little personalized cues that help people embody their, their movement from the inside out. Now, this is such a fabulous, fabulous tool that we have in our toolbox to use things like imagery and propping and verbal cues to help um, our clients to understand really the, the quality, the texture of the movement that we wanna see in all of these exercises. Pilates is an incredibly nuanced modality that has lots and lots of different levels of, of understanding. And here's the thing, sometimes because we're so used to, to cueing and we know how rich that experience is, we can overstimulate a client with too much of a good thing. That happens a lot. So we either give our clients um, kind of too many big picture cues that might not talk to what's happening in their physicality or we overburden them with trying to even at a stationary position trying to find too many things at once that they feel almost stunned and like they can't move forward. So a way that I like to work with my clients um, and I find really helpful to really start to skill build methodically and meticulously is to actually let the clients do some of the movements as long as it's safe for their body and they're not working with any pain or injury is to let them do some repetitions without a whole bunch of cues at first. So I kind of liken this to looking at the body in its own natural habitat, doing what it likes to do on its own. This gives me such rich information in which to actually cue from. So let's say I'm gonna be doing a little bit of work with a client, just pressing the arms back and forth here, right? And let's say the client sits down onto the long box and their seated position is here. And then their arms press here. This shows me, if I see that they're doing this a few times, this is how they're organizing themselves no matter what they're doing. So if I were to over cue from the get-go to bring them into this positioning, I might miss the rich opportunity to see that, ooh, they might need a little bit of release work around the hips or maybe they're pelvic floor is really tight because this is how they arrange themselves are, mm, I'm not gonna cue the abdominal wall so much because they're so condensed through here. If I just got them into their neutral without seeing that first kind of thin slice snapshot of how they live their life, I could get them here not knowing that say their abdominal wall is too tight and too condensed, I would get them into this position well-meaning, they would have to bring tension to get themselves there. And then let's say I use a cue that a lot of teachers do, which is use your abdominal wall. Well, they already overuse it in the wrong way. So I'm missing again this detail that when they prop themselves, they're here. So what this does is it A, allows your client to feel a before and after from feeling the movement in the arms here, those activations, and then bringing them to a better alignment and feeling how that changes the work that really allows them to understand why we do the cues that we do. But also, again, it shows me maybe their vulnerable areas um, and where their body likes to guard and protect. And then when I bring them into other exercises, those, those kind of hints can become highlighted again and we can continue to work it in lots of different planes in space. That's all for today. If you have any questions that you'd like to see answered on an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or our forum. See you next time and never stop learning.